So basically I'm just bringing the wire size down right in front of the charge controllers um, for the ground. <clears throat> um, these uh, breakers here, I got these on Amazon for about, I think they're about 20, 18 or 20 dollars a piece. For 60 amp, I wanted them rated exactly what the, uh, the uh, charge controller was. So they're 60 amps each, and they are the resettable kind. So if you pushed this button here, it would obviously break them open. And then after about 65 amps or so, they will obviously break open on their own. Of course, if there is a ground fault, they will break open almost immediately. So they are not GFCI, so I want to be clear about that. Basically, a ground fault or if something is shorting out, then you have all that energy that's going to heat that up really, really fast, and it should break open. So it's a safety measure for the output of the charge controllers. This is a safety measure for the input of the charge controllers and also allows me to disconnect the arrays from inside without having to go up to the box. So I can disconnect both of these arrays. And then obviously the output here at, what, we're looking at uh, 80 volts coming out of there approximately. And this one is 65 volts coming out of here. So you... Um, the reason that this is 80 volts is because, and I have to explain this, this the load the load now on my inverter is actually far less than what I'm putting out. So this is more of like an open voltage number. This number right here, so the array is putting out about 81 volts, about. It's kind of sitting in standby. Yes, there is some load there that you can see. There, there is some output, but it's not very much. Whereas this one here is working pretty much to keep the, the uh, inverter fully powered. And that one's down to 65 volts. That's the voltage that it's actually bringing it down in order to charge the batteries. The battery bank is at float right now. It's fully charged. So we're at 58.9 volts. So the bank is fully charged. And um, so whatever load's coming off of this array is basically what I've got lights on around the house. I think the fridge is on. The air conditioner is still running, but the compressor is not on right now. Um, so that's just basically, so I've got basically a like kilowatt of loader about there. And these charge controllers are really nice and they work in tandem, which is great because, you know, as load increases, once, once this charge controller is soaking all the energy that it can and the load is greater than it actually has output, then this one picks up the slack and it's really cool to sit here and kind of watch this stuff because this one is seems to be the dominant of the two and i don't know why i don't know the specifics don't ask me um i don't know why this one seems to dominate i think it's because the easterly sun um it just seems to because the, there's more energy there i guess i don't know to be honest something that i would be curious about learning about if anybody any of you know this one definitely is the dominant of the two. Um, and then this one here, if this one is putting out all it can and it's still not enough and the battery voltage is falling, that's where this one kicks in and starts to bring the battery voltage back up to compensate. So when the compressor and that air conditioner actually kicks on, then like you saw before, the, the load here will then rise up to keep the batteries obviously at float or at full charge so they work really really well I'm, I'm really 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 happy with these charge controllers i've had no problems with them at all they've been great and uh yeah i've been really happy plus they're a reasonable price and that's something that i was really worried about when i first got into these mppt charge controllers comparing them with the say midnight solar for example a midnight solar charge controller is um you know damn near a thousand dollars uh you know obviously they've got some some ones that are solar only or whatever that are cheaper obviously you're looking at the five to six hundred dollar range but um these things about a hundred bucks each and they are working flawless the fans never come on these things the fans i've never seen these fans come on they come on when you first power them on and then they shut off immediately never ever seen these fans come on of course i'm not pushing anywhere near their maximum. I've got what, uh, 5, 10, 15, I've got about 20 amps, 20 to 25 amps on each one of these. So the compressor just kicked on, on the air conditioner, and you can probably hear the batteries got slower. 
And now this array here is starting to help this charge controller here pick up the slack in order to keep the batteries as close to float as possible. There's always going to be some sagging there, you know, but considering that they're still above 13 volts, um, per battery that is, um, that's still well above where actually 13.02 volts is float charge for these particular batteries. So they're still at that mark. So I'm really not touching the batteries at all. Most of the work is being done by the charge controllers to power this inverter. In fact, unless there's a surge where the solar panels, charge controllers can't handle that surge, that's where your battery bank comes in to compensate. It's just like the alternator of your car. If you're running it idle and you've got you know a great sound system or whatever, obviously some of the battery is going to be doing the work to compensate because the alternator may not be able to do it for you. So it's the same, same concept here. Uh, the charge controllers are doing the heavy lifting to power this inverter. And if there is a surge, like when that compressor kicks on, that energy would then come from the battery bank to the inverter momentarily to be able to supply the energy and then it would go back to the controllers. It's a pretty neat, you know, setup. It's a pretty fascinating, you know, how it all works and so on. Um, and I've had no problems with these uh, charge controllers. So I may, just as a disclaimer, may be selling these on my website. I hope to be selling them. Believe me when I say I'm not going to be making very much money on them at all, but I want everybody to be exposed to these because I've been more than happy, and yes, another disclaimer, they were given to me, but they were given to me as a gift with no intentions of I'm going to have to do a video on these or anything else like that. There was no contract or agreement or anything else like that. Um, so I've been more than happy, and I'm just sharing my experience with you. Um, you know, they've been great. They've really been great. So, yeah, and obviously at the inverter point, um, this... Uh, 15,000 watt 48 volt power jack converter that I built is here and that runs into the breaker panel which is currently powering my setup. You can see that my main breaker is completely shut off coming in from the poles and this 60 amp breaker is actually what is supplying the energy for my uh, panel. So uh, yeah, it's, it's exceptional. It, it's working really, really well. I am very happy with this setup. It is so cool, trust me when I say it, it is so cool to be able to just run your whole house and air conditioning and just basically everything. I run everything except for the dryer. Um, the, the clothes dryer, I do not run. That's about four and a half kilowatts. That's a little bit more than I'd like to be able to run. Not, not in the inverter, but on the battery bank as well as I don't have enough solar for that kind of thing. Um, but everything else I run, and you know, I just air dry my clothes. I, I'm, I'm pretty cheap when it comes to that kind of stuff. If I have to, I'll run the dryer, but I try to avoid where possible. Uh, that's just me being cheap. Oh, you can see there, I've, yeah, breaking, breaking a thousand watts there, almost one kilowatt. Yeah, a little over a kilowatt now. The sun is probably almost as perpendicular to that uh, eastern array as it's going to get. And that's why you see the panels going up. So there's a kilowatt. And these panels here are pretty much idle right now. So pretty cool to watch. I love sitting here watching this stuff. It, it's geeky, I know. It's really geeky, but this is fascinating to me to sit here and watch that I have roughly, you know, you've got losses in conversion, the inverter consumes some, the efficiency of the conversion, things like that. So there is, you know, obviously some loss there, plus the panels are not exactly perpendicular to the sun where they would be the most efficient. But still, out of a 2.4 kilowatt array, putting out basically two kilowatts, I think is pretty damn good, considering I got some panels that are 45, some are flat. Um, you know, I think that's pretty good, to be honest. And yes, of course, I could do better. Guys, don't, don't sit here and criticize me. We're I just got off the phone with a customer. We were just talking about this. We are all in this together as far as being energy independent, being off the grid, going greener for Earth. And this is, it's a fun project. It's enjoyable. I love watching this kind of stuff. I really enjoy this. So you may have a better solution, and that's great. You know, I appreciate feedback, input, everything, but 
What I don't appreciate is the absolute criticism about no, that's stupid, you're doing it all wrong, etc., etc. Look, this is a perfectly acceptable setup, and with the exception of this inverter, if an electrician were to actually come in and look at this setup, it would pass um, you know, NEC standards. Absolutely. I've got the ground fault protection, I've got the equipment ground, the solar panels are grounded to earth using the two ground rods, everything is wired perfectly with adequately sized wires. Um, and as I said, the only thing that's not NEC compliant is this inverter. Huh. But, um, so that would be the only thing that would bust me. This here, um, you know, this is a perfect setup here, um, in my opinion, for what I have, okay? I envy those of you who have, you know, dozens and dozens and hundreds of solar panels, you know, dozens of batteries, you've got these systems, and I just literally sit back and think, wow, I'm in awe, and you guys, that's awesome, keep doing it, but, you know, don't criticize me for what I actually have here, and, you know, it's the best that I can do with what I've got, with the money that I've got, I'd love to be able to have a huge 100 battery set up and 200 solar panels and all the other stuff, I'd love to, but it's just not in the cards right now, and, um, so anyway, oh, we got a cloud that went through here. There are a few clouds floating around, and you can see what a huge difference it made on both arrays. Um, looks like the cloud is starting to pass through now because um, the arrays are coming back up. But yeah, the cloud came through, and now it looks like the cloud has passed. And you can see where both charge controllers are working together to keep the system as fully charged as possible. It's doing exceptional. I could stand here all day and watch this. It's fascinating to me, but that's my geekiness about this whole thing. I absolutely love this stuff. And by the way, I know this video is super long, but if you've got this far, if you have a setup of your own, send it to me. Showcase it. You got a YouTube channel? It's easy. Throw it up on YouTube. Let me see it. I want to see this. I want to see your setups. And if you have suggestions for me, I'm all open for suggestions. Believe me, I am. Oh, this is this is awesome. Look at that. Did you see that? Very briefly, there was what um, looked like, uh, yeah, it was pretty close to 1,030 watts. Pretty cool. I like watching that too. I know, I'm a geek. Looks like we got some more clouds coming through. But anyway, um, so uh, yeah, send it to me. Send me the images. Show me your setup. Do a YouTube video on it. Do what I'm doing right now. Don't be nervous in front of the camera. We are all, yeah, there's another cloud going through. It got pretty dark in the living room. Um, we are all in this together, okay? We're all trying to do what's better, and we all should learn from each other. There should not be one person who says, I know more than you, and then bring that other person down. You know, we're, we're all here to learn. You might have a better or more efficient setup than I do, and then I have a better, more efficient setup than someone else. But we all learn, so that's the important thing. Whether it comes from inverters, charge controllers, or breakers, everything. Your solar panels of choice, everything. How you have it wired, as long as it's wired safely. You do what you want to do. Just be safe about it. And enjoy the fruits of your labor like I am right now. I am just, just totally geeking out right now because of watching these numbers here. And I wish that I could have like a TV or something that is displaying these numbers in my workroom when I'm... You know, doing uh, repairing power jack and or whatever. Because I'd love to be able to sit here and watch these numbers. They're fascinating to me. Um, you know, if I had wind turbines, I'd be wanting to watch those too. So it's the geek in me. It really is. And uh, so, anyway, if you have any questions, of course, let me know. And if you have suggestions, I'm all for suggestions. Believe me. But if you're going to start your sentence off with, you're stupid and this is why, I'm going to flat out ignore you. But if you start your, uh, your suggestion off with, it looks great, but here's my suggestions for improving, and here is why this would improve your situation, go ahead. Throw it up there. I'd love to be able to hear about it. I'm learning, too. I don't know everything. I'm learning just like everyone else, and so I don't know everything about this. And you don't have to know everything about everything to be good at something. You just don't. And so I'm willing to accept the fact that I don't know everything and I could improve on whatever. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, obviously let me know. GenitreeSolar.com where you'll be able to find parts for power jet converters. And hopefully very soon here, these Make Sky Blue controllers. 
Um, you know, so you can support my channel by heading over there and purchasing your stuff there. I also do custom inverters like this particular inverter that I'm using right now. Um, this thing has been working flawlessly for, um, what, three weeks now? Three, three and a half weeks? It has been absolutely flawless. And the temperatures have been really good. So I've been really, really happy with this inverter. So you can purchase custom-made inverters from me. I fully warranty them, service them, and um, they, they operate fantastically. So uh, one more thing, Genetry Homestead, you'll find her on YouTube. Uh, Danielle, she is really into growing her own food. We are engaged to be married for October 2020. We will eventually combine our households, and I will be bringing the solar, she'll be bringing the food, and eventually when we get a piece of land ourselves, we're talking about at minimum 20 acres, um, ideally 40 acres, we'll be able to have livestock, more solar panels, more of a free lifestyle, and being independent. That's, that's the key, being independent. So again, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Hope you enjoyed this video. And take care.